Hey everyone, let's take a look at number 18 in section 4.3. We're going to find the critical points uh, and the intervals on which this function here uh, is increasing or decreasing. We're going to use the first derivative test to determine whether critical points are local maxima and minima. And when you give the, they just ask for the x coordinate. So be real, pay close attention to the format, how they want things. Sometimes, like if they want inflection points, they want both the x and y coordinates. So you list the points with um, a comma separated list. Other times they just want the location. They just want the x value only. So be real careful about that. Now this function, notice they give a restriction x has to be greater than zero. And that's true for the domain of this function because x to the 3 halves power. 3 halves means uh, cube x and then take the square root or take the square root and then cube it. But since you're taking the square root, your x value has to be non-negative because you cannot take the square root of a negative number and get a real number. So that's important in this. So um, it's real important that once you give your answers that you don't give an interval of increase or decrease like from negative infinity to zero or from you know negative four to, to, to three or something like that. It can't have any values that are less than zero, right? That's the that's the restriction, so very important. Okay, so we find the derivative, first of all, the derivative of x to the fourth is 4x cubed. Pull the 6 out, x to the 3 halves by the power rule is 3 halves, x to the 1 half. 6 times 3 halves is 9. And then here's my derivative to help me find out where the derivative is 0, because it's never undefined for any positive value of x. So um, I'm going to factor out x to the one half power, right? That's the smallest power of x. And that's going to leave me four x to the five halves, right? Remember when we multiply these back through, we're going to add the exponent. So one half plus five halves is six halves or three. And then I'm just left with nine here. So now the, the derivative will be zero. It's going to be zero when x is zero. So you could plug in x equals zero and get that. But remember our restriction, we're saying x is actually greater than zero. So um, actually, the, the true domain for this function would be all real numbers x greater than or equal to zero, but they're excluding zero. So zero technically would be a, a critical point for this function, but it's like it's it's at an endpoint on the domain. So it's it's not going to be a, a transition point or, or, or a point where we have a local max or min. Um, so we're going to exclude that, right, because uh, we're not going to include x equals zero. But this part, if this is zero, right, so 4x to the 5 halves minus 9 is zero, then the derivative will be zero. Well, what, what value of x makes that zero? We'll add 9 to both sides, divide by 4, and then solve for x. How can you do that? Well, to undo um, the 1 half power, you have to square both sides, right? You have to square to do the 1 half power, because 1 half power is the square root, right? And then how do you undo raising something to the fifth power? You take the fifth root, which is the 1 fifth power. So you can do both at one time. In other words, you're going to raise both sides to the reciprocal power, the 2 fifths power. Right? I'm going to raise both sides to the 2 fifths power. 2 fifths power. And so of course, 5 halves to the 2 fifths, what do we do with the exponents here? We multiply. What's 5 halves times 2 fifths? That's 1, right? So we just get x and then 9 fourths to the 2 fifths power. So you could, if you wanted to square, you get 9, you get 81 60 fourths. This is the same thing as basically the fifth root of 81 60 fourths if you want to actually compute, right? It's about 1.38, but this is going to be fine for the answer in this format. They want it in fraction form, so you can just leave it in that way. Um, okay, what do you want to do now? You want to um, do a sign check, right? So to find intervals where we're increasing or decreasing, we need a sign check. And for the first derivative test, we need a sign check. So uh, that again, don't, don't forget we're starting for values only greater than zero. Here's that uh, critical point, which is about 1.38. So plug in something less than 1.38, like one. And if I plug one into my um, derivative, you can you can just plug it in right here, right? Here's the derivative. If x is one, I get four minus nine. I get negative five. It's negative. And if I plug in something greater than 1.38, like two, if I plug in two or something bigger than that, I'm going to get a positive number. You can check and confirm that. So obviously now we can answer the questions. The function is increasing when the derivative is positive. So that's going to be on the interval from this number, which is about 1.38, but they want the exact value there to infinity.
uh, it's decreasing. Be careful, not from minus infinity, right? But from zero to that value, right? Because remember, we don't, we only are looking at positive values of x in the domain for this function. And then since we change from negative, which is meaning the function is decreasing to a derivative that's positive, which means it's increasing, decreasing to increasing means we have a local min. That's the first derivative test. There's no local maximum. I think Achieve wants you to put DNE for that. Okay, I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, let me know.